All right, guys, welcome back to the CS Classroom. Today, we're going to learn how to create PySimple GUI apps with collapsible sections. Um, so in our Python file right here, we've already imported PySimple GUI. And we have, we've already imported our symbols for up and down. We didn't really import them. These are just Unicode symbols. But I just pasted them into the file. So let's get started with the actual code to make this work. Um, so the first thing I want to do is I want to create the layouts for what goes inside each, each of these sections. So when we open up section one, we have an input and we have a button. When we open up section two, we have an input and a button. This is what I want to create right now. And we're going to create that like, we're going to create that like we would the usual layout as a 2D array. So we've got that. Um, we're just going to say sg.input, input one. Um, and then this is all going to be, well, it's going to be on two separate rows. So we're just going to then say, sg.button in a, another 1D array, uh, button section one. And then we'll give that some color. We'll say button color equals yellow on green. That's going to be what's going on inside right here. So this is just an example so that when you do, um, when you do uncollapse the section, you can see some stuff in there. Really, you could put whatever you want in here. So you could collapse and uncollapse whatever layout. I mean, you could have a table, you could have a larger text area, whatever you want can go in here. Um, so we're actually going to change the name of that to section one, to signify that it's in section one. And we'll create another layout for what will go in section two. And it's going to be pretty boring. It's just going to be the same thing, um, just with the button being a slightly different color. So we'll say yellow on purple. And we'll name this section two right here. So we've created the stuff that goes inside each collapsible pane or uh, section. Now what we want to do is we actually want to just create this. So we want to create everything that holds uh, these two sections, these two layouts. Um, and that's basically going to be uh, this header and the arrow for each of them. And then we're also going to add some of the functionality after that to make this collapse, this collapse and uncollapse functional functionality actually work. So let's go and get, let's get started. Um, we've created the layouts for section one, section two. Now we want to create a general layout that will hold both of these. So we're going to say layout, and we're going to have a 2D array, like so. And first, we're going to create this right here. So we're just going to have a um, sg.text. And then we'll have symbol down. Um, because right now we're just creating the default state. We're actually recreating the open state when it's kind of when it's open like this. All right, so that's going to be symbol down. Um, so we're going to say symbol down enable events equals true, uh, and then we're going to give it a key so that later on in our event loop we can refer specifically to section one or section two. So we'll say we'll give it a key of open section sec one. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to just show this text. So we'll have another text input. We'll just say sg.text, section one. Or we'll, yeah, let's call it section one. That's what it is here. All right. Um, and then for our next, like for the next part. So that's all going to go on one row. Um, and that will be in one one dimensional array. So for the next part, what we're going to do is we're going to specify um, this header right here. So we'll just have that. So again, symbol down because we are starting with the state in which um, both are uncollapsed. Um, we'll change this to two and SG text will be section two. Um, now what we're actually going to do um, in order to sort of make this work um, is we're going to create a function called def collapse right up here. And the input is going to be layout and key. And we're going to um, call this, we're going to call this right, not right there, but right here. So we'll say collapse. 
section one, which is actually just this pane right here. And then the key for whichever header we've just specified. So that's going to be this one right here. Or actually, um, we're going to specify a different key. So we're actually going to create a new key. Um, that was my mistake. We're going to say, we're just going to say sec1. Okay. Now I'm going to explain the reasoning really quick right here. So we're going to, um, in this function right here, def collapse, we're actually just going to return sg.pin. And then uh, column. So we're going to create something called a column. Um, and in that column, we're going to have our layout. And we're going to specify a key for that column as well, or whatever we've input. All right. Um, so basically, how this is going to work is we're actually going to do this for both of them. So we'll have a comma right there, and we'll have a comma right there, and then we'll do that for two as well. So for example, for this one right here, um, what we're going, what we're doing is we are basically taking the layout for whatever goes inside the section. We're inputting this into, into this function um, along with a key that allows us to refer to this inside right here. Um, and we're taking that in order to create a column. Now, a column is basically just a section of our window, just a pane, we could call it. So this is a part of our window, okay? So basically what we're doing right here, this collapse function is allowing us to create a part of the window that has the layout we've specified, um, either one, either section one or section two, and allows us to give it a key specified right here. Okay, so then whatever is whatever is here is um, referred to as section one. Whatever is here is referred to by section two. Okay, now we've done sg.pin, sg.column, layout key, because sg.pin allows us to um, display or hide um, whatever is inside. So in this case, sg.pin allows us to display or hide the column, okay? So that's why we use this function and this column is just gonna be whatever is right here, okay? So then when we get to our event loop down here, um, we will either be able to uh, show or display um, whatever is right here in this row, okay? So basically like we have one row for our header and everything underneath that is corresponding to this column which is being returned from this function right here. So really we're just displaying a column right here for section one, which is this, and a column element right here for section two, which is this, okay? And this is displaying, undisplaying, displaying, undisplaying the column through the use of sg.pin. And that may not make as much sense now, but it will once we get to our event loop, where which is where we'll actually be able to trigger that display and hide functionality. So we're gonna go ahead and create a window to hold all of this. Um, so we'll say window equals sg.window and then collapsible sections and layout. Um, and we're going to create two variables to keep track of whether we have um, opened or closed, whether we've displayed or hidden whatever is inside the collapsible section. Well, just to keep it simple, we can just use the sort of usual syntax. It's not as Pythonic. And we could just say that. And this is gonna go outside our event loop so we can make changes and still keep track of it from inside the event loop. While true, um, this stuff is pretty standard boilerplate event values equals window.read. And then we're going to print. Well, actually, we don't really need to do that. There's no point in doing that. 
um, we'll say if event equals sg.winclosed. Break, which would break the event loop and close the application. Um, and then we're going to deal with the open sec1. So what happens when we click on this and the open sec2, which is what happens when we click on this. So we're going to say if, if event equals open sec1, this is this one, we can just copy paste that. Then we're going to do two things. So if you click on this, we're going to say opened one equals not opened one. So we're just going to reverse whatever this is. So if this was true, we're going to make it false. And that's to keep track of um, whether it's been opened or not. So as soon as we click this, we change the state, we reverse, um, we go from true to false or false to true. And then we're going to do two things. We're going to say window uh, open sec one, which is referring to this right up here. Um, dot update symbol down if opened one else symbol up so when we click on this one this allows us to toggle between showing the symbol well this is really the symbol right or the symbol down Actually, let's just go ahead and change that one just to be clear. So that's going to be symbol right because it's pointing right and symbol right. So in this line right here, we're updating just this part right here um, and we're creating it symbol down. We're also going to make sure that it shows symbol right if it's symbol down and we click on it or symbol down if it's symbol right and then we click on it. Um, so now the next thing we can do is we're going to do window uh, sec1 We'll just say we actually need to put some hyphens right here just to follow the standard format, right? Okay, so we're gonna have window um, sec1 No, we gotta do underscore. I'm terrible at typing. Um, dot update uh, visible equals opened one. Okay, and what this is doing is basically this is changing the visibility um, of this window right here or this this uh, column right here that we've created. So basically, what this what what this is doing is Again, we are using this in order to um, put an element right here that can be displayed and undisplayed using a visible keyword, okay? Um, and right here, this window, or this column is being created with the layout we've specified right here, here. And it's also being given the key that we've specified here. So really, when we are, um, when we're doing this right here, when we're update, we're updating this column, okay? And we're telling this column to either be displayed, to either be visible or invisible. And right now we're specifically referring to the column that would be right here. Okay. Um, but we're just going to copy this actually. There's probably a way like it's more efficient to handle both cases, but right now we're just going to copy this. Um, and we're going to say, we're basically just going to do the same thing. So I changed this to sec2. Um, this should be open2, two, open2. Two. I changed this to sec2, this to, this to 2, and then I put open2 down here as well. And the same logic applies right here. And then we'll have window.close down here. So when we're done with the event loop, or when we break out of it, then we're done with the program. So that's basically how this application works. What I want to do now is I want to run it, um, see if you wrote the code correctly, and if not, then troubleshoot it to show you that process. Mm, okay. 
Hmm, we got an unexpected keyword right here. It's probably the fact that that's capitalized. So right here, we had enable events. That should just be lowercase right there. Let me just move this so it's a bit easier to see. Okay. Let's clear this. And then run it again. Okay, so we got this right here. Let's try to toggle this. Okay, and it looks like everything works well. So that's how you create collapsible sections. Remember, anything you want can go in here. Um, and you also have events attached to this. So if you click on this collapsible section, you can trigger other stuff, like a password um, prompt or whatever you want. If you found this video to be of, of value and you want to see more like it, please be sure to like and subscribe. Have a nice day.